Autumn, much like spring, is a season of stark transition, taking us from the vibrant bounty of summer back into the barren cold of winter. If you were to jump from the beginning to the end, the change would be vast, but it's a season that begins almost imperceptibly, and much of autumn is a time of harvest and plenty, as we make the most of tomatoes, courgettes, and fresh herbs before the leaner days of winter return. Hedges swell with dark fruit and purple fingers gather blackberries by the basket for pies and crumbles. The warm autumn rains have the dry summer grasses growing again and my sheep fatten in the fields as their fleeces begin to thicken ahead of winter. Our neighbour brings his cows down through our higher meadows to pull at the long pasture and spread the wildflower seed. Sitting among them, I love their peaceful presence, chewing loudly. They swish at bothersome flies and watch me curiously with doleful eyes and sweet grassy breath. In the golden light of dawn, low mist hangs in the valley and the dewy light illuminates a carpet of spiderwebs floating ethereally in the air. The end of September has the swallows gathering in their hundreds, swirling above the tufty meadows as they teach their young to fly while gorging on insects before the migration to Africa for the winter. In the garden, things are flourishing and all the hard work of spring is really paying off now. Our tall hazel frames are thick with a jungle of dark green leaves that hide clusters of long, crunchy beans beneath. Sunflowers stand tall, alive with bees that vibrate with joy in the yellow pollen. Jerusalem artichokes teeter in the wind as pumpkin vines escape their borders and climb the garden fence. In the greenhouse, the shorter days have us planning ahead, sowing the last of the cabbages, leeks and kales to keep us fed through the dark frosts of winter. I just had to read that to you because that really brought a smile to my face this morning. That is the introduction to the autumn chapter on Julius Roberts' book, The Farm Table. We actually are going to a supper club with Julius on Friday, which I think will be tomorrow, <laughs> the day that you're watching this. And I just thought it was gorgeous, really, really gorgeous. I'm actually going to be doing a few recipes from his book over the next week. Um, I think Charlie picked this up from Dalesford or something a few days ago, and it really is so lovely. Good morning, by the way. It is Sunday morning, and I think we're just gonna have the most wonderfully chilled, cozy October Sunday today. Charlie is out running a few errands, and I am going to make some granola because we've run out and it really is very easy and very, very delicious. I'm going to do a granola from a different <laughs> book. This is the River Cottage Great Roasts book. Granola is just a very, very simple thing to make. It's just a slight change in the ingredients as to the one that I made before. I've got two doggies sunbathing <laughs> down here by the Arga. They know that it's a very relaxed Sunday. And I've also got very strategically <laughs> positioned in the back here, a trug of pumpkins that I am going to be spreading around the house a little bit later on today. So yes, let's get started. It's gonna be a really nice cozy autumnal vlog. I attempted to make my cinnamon and nutmeg latte this morning, but I think I actually put too much cinnamon in and it started to actually fizz a little bit, <laughs> which was quite peculiar, but it still, still tastes good. So for the granola, the first thing you need is obviously lots of oats and nuts and seeds. At this time of year, our walnut tree is harvestable and I will be going out and picking some walnuts later. I just need to wait for my mother to come home because she has actually got some plastic gloves. And if you remember Walnut Gate from last year, you will know why I need plastic gloves. So these are actually walnuts from our garden from last year and this is the last of them. So the timing and the quantity couldn't be any more perfect. So I'm actually gonna use up all of those. Personally, I love to put pumpkin seeds in a granola. They're really good for you. Again, plentiful at this time of year. If you watch Tuesday's vlog and you've made the pumpkin mac and cheese, you might also have some pumpkin seeds left over. Hazelnuts are fantastic for a bit of crunch. 
pecans, another favourite of mine, and of course you want plenty of oats. So the first thing to do is get them all out on a roasting tray, spread them out and bake for 10 minutes. A glorious day today considering we're in the middle of October I think it's forecast to be 24 degrees which is delightful so my apple tree is exceptionally abundant this year I've got more apples <laughs> than I know what to do with them I might try something fun later on today it depends if Charlie can pick me up one particular ingredient that I've popped on his list but my tree is giving me lots of little apples this year and if we look at this one, it's perfectly ripe. If you can pull it off the tree and it comes off really easily, then you know it's ready to come off the tree. So for my bit that I'm going to pop on top of the nuts, I've got my jug. I'm going to pop some melted butter, a little bit of light muscovado sugar, one egg, and some delicious maple syrup. Last time I also did a bit of olive oil and of course some salt, and this is gonna give it that really gorgeous richness to the flavor. I don't think that's gonna be enough, but luckily I have got another in the cupboard. I've got 50 grams of the light muscovado sugar, I've got an egg, I've got my finely chopped apple, and around 80 to 100 grams of butter, which I did soften on the agar, um, but I'm just gonna pop it back on there for a few more moments so that, that butter can thoroughly melt, and then I'm going to spread that all over this and roast for about another 20 minutes, giving it a stir halfway through. Granola is in the aga and I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir in about 10 minutes time So as I mentioned, it's actually really glorious today and I have not drunk my morning coffee Which was a did I already tell you this cinnamon chaga mushroom and nutmeg oat milk latte I've not drunk it. It's now cold. So I'm actually gonna turn this into an iced pumpkin chai and cinnamon latte Sounds amazing. I've never done this before, um, but I feel like this could be rather sensational. Can you see how much I'm glowing? It's just, <laughs> wow, really, really toasty today. Maybe, maybe we're in for an Indian summer. I'm not complaining. So I'm going to do this in the Thermomix, pouring in my three quarters of cold coffee from earlier. I'm going to add in a spoonful of my favorite chai syrup, which is the Chai Spiced Bombay Tea from Jeeves and Jericho. Um, I don't know if this is local. It is, yeah. The Artisan Tea Smiths, Oxfordshire. We've got the same postcode, <laughs> so it must be very, very local. But you can buy this online, so I'll try and find it to link down below. Now, because I want this to be a bit of a treat, I'm adding in whoop, just a splash of vanilla. Sorry if you can hear a fly buzzing around by the way. There are just so many indoors at the moment. <laughs> it's very annoying. And now this is where it gets extra special because in here I have actually got my homemade cinnamon ice cream which I now make regularly so that we can serve it with my apple and blackberry crumble. 
Ice cream is actually really, really easy to make as long as you use really good quality ingredients like proper thick creamy cow's milk, a really nice double cream. We have organic cinnamon. Um, I think we get it from Buy Whole Foods Online, our cinnamon. And with really good quality ingredients, you get really sensational dishes. So this is my cinnamon ice cream, and I'm going to pop a scoopful of that into the coffee. It's gonna be amazing. Ooh. I don't mean to toot my own <laughs> trumpet or blow my own horn, I don't know, but this really is quite possibly the best ice cream I have personally ever tried in my entire life. It is so delicious. <laughs> I bet you could actually make a pumpkin spiced ice cream. I'm actually gonna put a scoopful of this in the coffee as a whole scoop um, when it's all been whizzed together. So I'm gonna leave that out. And I'm also gonna garnish with a little bit of pumpkin pie spice, but ground nutmeg, ground cinnamon would be just as perfect. Okay, maybe I'll do a tiny bit more oat milk. You could, of course, use regular milk. And I'm going to blend it all up. too dramatic but guys I think this might just be the most scrumptious thing I have ever created that cinnamon ice cream just elevates everything it is so so good so I've popped a straw in and the lid this is my little Amazon cup I'll leave a link down below I created this cute little setup to do an Instagram story I think I'll pop the recipe for this on the blog because it truly is sensational and I know that lots of you live places that are a lot warmer than the UK so I feel like an iced pumpkin spiced chai scrumptious latte like this will be wonderful for so many of you. So I think it's about time we checked on our granola and gave it a stir. Oh my gosh, it smells incredible. These are some blueberries that uh, Charlie and I picked yesterday and I froze overnight in a baking tray. The reason I do that and then put into a stasher bag is because this way they freeze individually, whereas if you put them all straight into the stasher bag and freeze them that way, you just get like a frozen chunk of blackberries. So I'm now going to put my frozen blackberries from this tray, break them all up um, and put them in the stasher bag. Then I can grab a handful every time I make a crumble or a lovely morning smoothie. sensational so this is this has probably been in the aga for around sorry that's my washing machine making weird noises having such a good chore morning i've done three loads of washing so far today i digress this has now been in the aga for around 30 minutes i didn't think it had had quite long enough before so i popped it in for another 10. everything is starting to look beautifully golden on top as you can see if you added a few more oats and really compressed it down, this would essentially be a flapjack recipe. Yummy. Now, the hardest part of this whole recipe is this bit, because you have to leave it, don't touch it, for around half an hour while it completely cools down. And with all of these smells and the warmth, you just wanna tuck in straight away. So I need to step away from the kitchen, hope that Charlie does the same, um, and leave this for half an hour, at which point I'll crumble it all up pop it in the jar and our granola is complete. I am actually in a hot sweat. I've just spent the last five minutes trying to rescue a fly, not even a bumblebee, not even a wasp, but a fly that was trapped between the layers of our old Georgian windows and that has absolutely exhausted me. Anyway, I'm going to distract myself for half an hour while the granola cools down. This, by the way, is the most sensational thing I think I've ever made in my life. 
Anyway, darlings, we're up here because I have something very exciting to share with you. This little part of the video is in collaboration with the beautiful Astrid and Mew, which is a gorgeous jewelry brand. I wear so many of their pieces on a daily basis. Today, I have got a few different rings on from them including these ones are probably my all-time favorite this collection here you might remember i also have those really beautiful i'll pop a photo on the screen here huggy um hoops which just always look so elegant by the way the reason i'm not wearing <laughs> my wedding ring before any rumors start circulating is because um i think i trapped some body lotion underneath the wedding band and it's given me a bit of a sore <laughs> which is the most pathetic thing ever but i've just um hacked into this neosprin half to let the fly out i basically created this like contraption to scoop him out of the windowsill and half because i needed to pop some of this on said cut oh two o'clock already anyway we're not here to talk about flies or my wedding ring we are here to talk about the astrid and mew christmas advent calendar now i am just hoping, fingers and toes crossed, that this is still available because this has been out since Tuesday. I will have let you know on my stories on Tuesday and in Tuesday's vlog about this. So hopefully those of you fastest fingers first will have got your hands on this. But now I'm gonna share it with you in more detail. This is the 24 day advent calendar from Astrid and Mew. There is also a 12 day version and also a 24 karat gold version of this calendar. So you can really choose whichever is most suitable to you or the very lucky recipient if you are gifting this. I feel like advent calendars these days are just such an amazing hack to get the most gorgeous products at an incredible price. This actually is worth over 1,300 pounds. So you are getting an awful lot of jewelry in here. This particular advent calendar, you can choose whether to get gold or silver, depending on your personal jewelry preference. All the jewelry, now that I'm not wearing my ring, that I'm wearing today is actually gold. So I've got the gold version here to share with you. I'm wearing my favorite Astrid and Mew earrings. These are the little cosmic star earrings. Can you see? They're perfect little hoop and then they've got the most delicate hanging star and I feel that they're just perfect for this time of year. So in here you've got everything from rings and spoiler alert when I was unboxing the stories I discovered this top ring in there and I just couldn't put it back. I was like that is so gorgeous I need to be wearing that <laughs> for the rest of time. Rings, earrings, um, bracelets, necklaces, also this bracelet that I have been wearing um, is also something that you will find in the advent calendar. It's kind of like a little friendship infinity twist with the gemstones on there. Gorgeous. So let's talk about the box itself. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. It is this leather effect box in a beautiful delicate pink with this cosmic kind of sparkling um, like stars and very beautiful pattern on it which hopefully you can see if it's not too bright outside in the beautiful gold light pink faux leather and inside look i'm actually using a tripod for once <laughs> i feel very very proud of me you've got a ginormous mirror and underneath the little boxes that the jewelry comes in it's actually a suede little organizer and of, and of course you can use this to store your jewelry in afterwards let me tell you jewelry boxes like this not cheap so this is just an added thing that you're getting with this year's calendar if you get the 24 day version you also have the two drawers and the little suede out sections in here are different sizes so when you have completed the calendar you can pop your necklaces or your bracelets in there and it's just so lovely so beautiful to have this on your dressing table I will of course leave this link down below and I'll also leave the solid gold, the silver version and the 12 day version linked down below too. This is actually Astrid and Mew's biggest launch ever. It retails at £650, so this is an exceptionally generous and premium thing to either treat yourself to or treat a loved one to. But you do get 24 pieces of jewellery in here, including some advent calendar exclusives. So without further ado, let's have a little sneak peek inside. Obviously, I've already shown you the ring and the bracelet, but let's see what other gorgeous pieces are in here. 
This feels very professional. I've come to sit at the desk in here because, um, quite frankly, I need both hands to do this unboxing. Oh my goodness, I feel like you should you should get to see it while I'm unboxing it. I'm not going to undo everything. I'm just going to show you a few little sneak peeks and I have not pre-looked in these, so let's just go for it. I'm opening up here day number five. You still get everything in the beautiful little suedette pouches. And in here... Ooh la la, oh my gosh. This is absolutely gorgeous, and I know someone who has got this exact thing on their wish list. Now this is, here, it's this beautiful, are they called barbells? I think so, so delicate and pretty. Now if you have got multiple piercings, then this is a really gorgeous way of, can you see? I hope you can see that, of really layering up your ear jewelry, creating the most beautiful stack. I actually do not have multiple piercings, although astronomy is making me really feel like I want to. So I could open up another day and get a different one to have that beautiful mismatch look. A lot of them have got very similar vibes. I'm sure we'll find something else that's similar. So it's not completely odd earrings, but it just makes people take a second glance when you've got something a little bit different in each ear. Ooh. Oh, so, mm, I don't know if I would pair this with the solid barbell. This again would be great for layering up your ear. This is the most beautiful teeny weeny. Let me tell you, my camera does not like focusing on things like this. I'm like chasing the focus. Can you see it's a tiny little hoop with these gorgeous stones. Oh, I'm so sorry, Canon. You are really struggling here. Yeah, um, and again, fantastic for layering up the ear or just wearing on its own, it's so delicate, and you can really create the most perfect ear cluster. Do you know what? If, um, if I knew someone who had recently got their ears pierced or an additional piercing, I would totally gather up with a few friends or family members and treat them to this because just so, so generous. Let's open up day number 19. This is just such a satisfying collection here. Day number 19. Ooh, this one is empty, <laughs> so this means that I already stole the item out of here. I think that was the ring. Must have been drawn to number 19 before. Let's have a look in day number 21. Ooh, what do we have here? Is it another little earring? I think it might be. Do you know what? This I would pair with that first little barbell I showed you. Again, gorgeous for layering up your ear. Oh, it actually focused, but also just the most sweet and delicate to wear. Oh, and maybe I do want to get another piercing because that just looks so pretty. Just accessorizing yourself with multiple sparkles. I absolutely love it. Now, who can resist seeing behind door number 24, the piece de resistance? Some of you may have already seen this, depends what other content of mine you have watched because I have opened these before and I basically just can't wait to wear them again. Behind day number Christmas, behind day number Christmas Eve, behind the door that you would open on Christmas Eve is quite possibly the most beautiful pair of earrings I've ever seen in my entire life because they just tick so many, I have to really hide my face, they tick, come on, yay, there we go, sorry about the weird hand angle. I just can't let the camera see my face otherwise it will want to focus on that. You can see they are the most perfect little hoops. Oh it's gone. With a pearl hanging down and as much as I don't want to take these out because I love them I want to show you these. It's like a twizzly, a twizzly um, hoop which actually matches the shape of this ring that I'm wearing and others that I have got within my Astrid and Mew collection. And what I love about this is the fact that so many of you will wear these for the first time as your Christmas Day earrings because of opening them on day number 24. And what a perfect Christmas Day earring they are. And then special occasion earrings for the rest of time. I absolutely love them. The quality of Astrid and Mew pieces really is exceptional. The pieces are so timeless, so elegant and very, very sparkling. So my darlings, I will leave the calendar link down below. Do not be slow. I don't think there'll be any left after today because it really is such an incredible treat. As I said, their biggest launch ever, worth over £1,300. So that is quite 
the saving and if this one is not quite perfect for you then as I mentioned there are others in the collection so I'll leave the Astronomy collection page linked down below as well. So now my darlings, <laughs> I think seeing as it's such a glorious day I'm actually going to head into the garden um, see if there's any little tasks that need to be done but first I'm going to finish the most delicious drink in the world. Mm. Yamarillo. I've just come down to my favourite part of the garden and some new dahlias are blooming which have not yet bloomed this summer including this really sweet little one which is yellow with a more ambery centre. So funny that it's choosing now, in the middle of October, this little sunny burst to bloom. With dahlias you don't want to pick them before they open like this because they actually don't continue to open in water unlike a rose or a tulip so you just want to pick them when they are in their full glory like so and you do want to pick them because the more you pick the more you grow the more they will grow I know you already know this because I've been saying it all summer but just in case anyone is new so the fountain is looking gorgeous the anemone behind are blooming. Here's another really pretty one tucked away down here. Rather beautiful. And I think my favourites at the moment are these little amber and red burgundy pom-pom dahlias. That one's quite small. There's a few, few more up here. These were part of my winning collection <laughs> at the show this year, the village show and I'm enjoying them just as much as we go into autumn. They also dry out really nicely if anyone is into flower drying. These beautiful anemones over here. Do you know what? I think I'm just going to spend five minutes down here deadheading so that everything maybe gets a little fresh burst of life during this sunny spell we're having. Okay my darlings, I'm just waiting for Charlie to join me in the kitchen because we've got something that we want your opinion on. Um, but a very quick outfit of the day, I haven't filmed this yet for my 30 days of autumn outfits because I don't know why I haven't done it yet today, <laughs> I should have done it while I was actually getting dressed. But I'm going to accessorise with a belt um, and then film it. I think I'm going to start posting them at 6pm instead of at midday because I'm finding it a bit of a rush to film and then edit and then do the LTK which has got all the outfit details all before midday. And I'm guessing most of you are more online at 6pm-ish anyway. So today's outfit of the day, considering it's sunny and 24 degrees out and yet it's the middle of October, <laughs> we want to be thinking about autumn things. I'm just loving sleeveless knits at the moment. This one is from Mango and then I placed a Kate Hutchins inspired, gosh my balance, Massimo Duty order which included these trousers which are like a relaxed linen and I really really love them. Um, they just are very comfortable and it's a nice way of me sticking with my new love of trousers but that's really in the way isn't it um but yeah during the autumn time and when i want to be wearing more relaxed outfits at home my footwear might shock you <laughs> i've actually had these for at least a year they kind of look like birkenstocks but they were in fact from lk bennett and i just wear them around the house as little house shoes they are actually like outdoor friendly so great for nipping into the garden and I think they look quite cool with this style of trouser so this is just a really nice relaxed Sunday um, spending a day at home out of the day. The granola is now almost ready to be put into the jar I'm just going to give it a few moments and we've got these four little items here and Charlie has arrived and do you want to explain what they are darling? Rather excitingly they are from Arga Mm -hmm. And they are the new enamel samples right. for the Arga that we're going to be getting. Yay. So I don't know, have we said about this? So it's yeah. been a bit of a journey, obviously, when we bought the house three and a half years ago, we inherited this lovely Arga. It's a blue colour, it's nice, but it's not 100% our taste. Um, and we sort of knew that from day one. We've explored the route of having it re-enamelled with a company called Blake and Bull. And in the same way that we're always proud to sing and praise brands that are brilliant, mm. I would have to say Blake and Ball are pretty awful customer service. Oh no! Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is, but we just basically, they just didn't seem very interested. 
um, as a company, you know, Chloe, who works with us, um, looked into it for us, but they were pretty hopeless as a company. Really? So, so that already what, they didn't get back to us? Been, already we kind of decided actually maybe we can't, you know, move forward with re-enamelling the Argo. In the meantime, we've always featured Argo on Instagram, featured Argo on YouTube. Obviously, we're big fans of Argo as a brand. I still, to this day, get followers asking, what is an Argo? Yeah, and I think... Look, I think this season we're going to look at doing a lot more with the Arga, talking about why we love having one. Of course, in the world we live in now where everyone is um, super focused on what energy we're using, particularly with bills being so high at the moment, mm. I think they get a bit of a bad rep. Don't quote me on any stats or anything, but I think we've said this before. In this part of the house, so this Arga's electric, it's always on, but you can change the setting. Mm. But the underfloor heating that's in this room and in there and we don't have radiators, never comes on because mm. of the Arga. Mm. So it's kind of the lesser of two evils, I believe, because that's electric. This is being, unfortunately, because of where we are in the Cotswolds, there's no gas. Mm. We have oil delivered, which burns to, to do the underfloor heating. Right. So we're never going to pretend that we're some sort of eco warriors. But as you know, we're always conscious of things and we'll always make as many changes as we can to our lifestyle that are better for the environment where possible. Um, certain things are out of your control. But when it comes to the Arga, I think it's a lot more than just a cooking piece. And, and I guess we can try and show that over this season because this has been off all summer. And the plan will always be to turn the Arga off in the summer. Yeah. Um, so that we use our lovely barbecue and also it doesn't make sense having it on. Anyway, ramble over. We're going to be getting a new Arga. Arga will take this one away. Sorry to interject. Just as a really, really top line thing for those that have been asking what is an Arga, it's basically a cast iron range, range cooker. cooker. Mm -hmm. It's got the two things on the top which are like warm for simmering and hot for cooking. And then it's got three doors and a panel that you control it from. So should we do a very quick little yeah. history? Yeah. So I don't know the exact uh, time when they're invented, but originally they were actually wood fired and then they became oil fired. And coal? Um, I'm not sure about that, uh, maybe, but the most common ones were oil and you still buy, people still buy houses now and inherit oil ones. Mm. They're obviously the most uh, expensive to run and probably the worst for the environment. Mm. Um, over time they have evolved. My mum and dad, I grew up with a gas one mm. and I think they've got this almost snobbish um, sort of upper class association. I mean, I grew up in a fairly small cottage. They're expensive. They're an investment as, a, as an oven. Mm. I think they cost probably, now they're more expensive than ever, right? Yeah. Like everything in the world. Yeah. Um, I, th I think mum said they paid six or 7,000 for theirs. Wow. Which is 30 years ago. Wow. Which is a lot. That's a People lot of money. People do spend four or 5,000 on ovens on these super expensive French ovens. Of course, it is an investment. Yeah. Right, and it's a luxury item. Mm. Um, but also, when you consider how much you use it, do you the think they way, were invented before the typical oven? I well, yeah, I would imagine. So, well, they do were you think? Electricity. Yeah. So, so, do you think that maybe it evolved? Like, obviously, in our dining room, we've got that bread oven thing. People yeah. were literally cooking on fire, I don't know. and I... then these were invented. So that's why a lot of older houses have them. Because I mean, think about it. When this house was going through its ages, before a modern oven would have been added, an Arga would have been added. Because houses like this and farmhouses, you know, typically it's a house where a lot of cooking gets done, a lot of fa family gatherings are had. Yeah. So maybe that justified I, the investment. I think this is our. So this is part one of us sort of talking more about the Arga mm. um, and we're hoping, so we're actually going to be working with Arga, so disclaimer, Arga are going to be replacing this for us as part of a sort of hopefully kickstarting working together with Arga. We sort of, at the start of the year, and obviously we're near the end of the year now, you and I wrote down 10 brands that we would love to work with in some capacity this year through no thought of... Um, you know, monetary sense or business sense, just brands that mean a lot to us. Mm. Brands like Holland Cooper, British brands. Yeah. And Arga was on that list. Brands and that are very authentic to yeah, us. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Bra well, brands that we, we, we love. And to be honest, I think and we hope we can add a lot of value to Arga. I don't think Arga will mind me saying this. I think it's a tricky one for them. I think their brand messaging has been rather lost. And I think their social media is, is potentially targeting an older demographic. And I think it's important that we all appreciate and understand what they are before writing them off. Mm. Um, so anyway, back to this. So we're going to go to probably a store, aren't we? I mm. think. We're definitely going to go to the factory because a lot of this is still British made. Almost all of this is British made, mm. which I think they also... Is it don't. cast iron? So this is cast iron and then it's got enamel on it. Mm. So 
So long and short, so my mum and dad have one for, I'm 33, they've had it for 30 years, they've had virtually no issues with it, uh, I think they've had it turned off a couple of times, because it's gas, so it's a bit trickier, and it is a phenomenal sort of hub in the home, mm. and obviously you need a bit of space, but it heats the room, obviously the dogs love it, I, I remember growing up, drying my rugby kit in front of it, yeah, it's you the heart put, of the home, isn't it? You can it? put your walking shoes or your, wet, not necessarily wellies, but your shoes, little trainers that you're going to go walking out in, in, it, in front of it before you go out and they're warm. Yeah. Toast on the Arga, which we'll show more on, is unlike any other toast. Toasted the bagels on it this morning. On it. And mm. the beautiful thing about it is it's always, in the winter, it's always on. Mm. So cooking things are a lot quicker, right? Mm. Uh, so this is on our one, this original one, we've got the roasting oven. This is actually just the control panel. This is what's called like the warming oven, so it really just simmers and it keeps things warm. Yeah. And then this is around 180, this one. Yeah. But obviously the more you use the Argo, the, it loses heat as you go. Yeah. This was, I believe... But then it regains it in a couple of hours. Of course, yeah. yeah. So this, I believe, was a very early electric model. So not only through replacing this will we be saving money in the long run, because the newer models are more energy efficient, but also we will have the ability unlike this it's either on or off mm. and we will have the ability to turn different elements off so i think next summer we'll turn all of this off we'll probably leave these on yeah i struggled without them this we did summer. struggle because we've only got this small induction on and as part of this kind of project we're going to do in the kitchen where we love this kitchen but we're just bringing it to our to what we want from it we're going to change the tiles to suit our taste aren't mm. we mm. and we're going to insert a four ring induction here mm. because two is not really enough especially as we hope to have a family and it's it's a you know it's, it's not enough for a kitchen this size we've got a family yes but um do you hear so, him snoring a second ago know, sausage so, dogs are number one Argo fans but yeah i think look i think hopefully we'll change perception of anyone that thinks they're a bit i do think there's a perception that they're a bit snobby Argos. put it this way i honestly think that once you've experienced one I if couldn't you've go got back space now. for it and you can justify it financially. Yeah. It, you honestly never want to go back and cook with anything else. Yeah. Um, and they really suit old homes. Like they are the heart of the I home. Think they suit modern homes as well. Yeah. And actually, th this also sort of segues through in the second cottage, which has been a long time coming. This was something we purchased before entering into negotiation with Argo and working with them. We've got the, the smallest version, mm. which is a half of this, which yeah. just has one oven and the, the stove top mm. also please yeah forgive us for terminology because we're not very okay with any argo terminology but anyway so um yeah excitingly we're going to be replacing this this will get refurbished yeah they get melted down don't they recycled uh, yeah. so so that's great and it just comes out it'll come out the new one will be more energy efficient mm -hmm. and it will be a little bit more high end in terms of the features that it's got so what are the little nodules so, we've got here i think we've always discussed racing green and this is british racing green lovely which is probably my favorite this is i don't do you know what the only you know this is an authentic sort of um, no money's exchanging hands in this collaboration with arga and as always i want to be as authentic as we can i would say something they could improve on is putting the names of the colors on the back yeah. because i don't know what that's called we all we ordered Olive. them but it's a more, I love that. It's a Cotswold green. I'm actually it? leaning towards this. You know, we've always mm. discussed racing green because it's the colour that Charlie's parents have got and it's gorgeous. But we are looking to replace this grey with a dark green marble. And I just feel like it could be a lot of dark green. I actually also really like I do too. The, this. And mm. this is, I think, I, I, once again, don't know the Vanilla. exact term, but it's a cream colour. Yeah. And it is probably the most traditional Argo yeah. colour. And then this pink colour is the pink of the one at Straw Top 2. It's not right for so this kitchen, cute. but it is amazing, right? Yeah. Oh, that does look absolutely amazing. Come and see how it looks from afar, like if you imagine the whole thing being that colour. Yeah, my, my issue with that one, unfortunately, I think the challenge with this colour is the contrasts. So at the moment, my argument would be that we love the stone floor, we love the lighter coloured kitchen and the lighter stone. And then we've got this green. I think if we introduce this and a dark green marble, we've got a lot of different colours going on that aren't necessarily complementing each other. That's actually almost too similar. Of course, we but can Don't you think that's a good thing? But it's really similar. I don't know. I, I think it'll tie in. I mean, these are always difficult conversations to have on YouTube. I, I think just my personal opinion is the darker green will be a statement piece and then we'll have the dark green marble 
and then the lighter walls, the lighter prints, and then 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 based on all those decisions, then we work out what tiles we want. Mm. Um, I love it's this really, color. Don't really get me wrong. I decision. love this color. I just think it's maybe not bold enough. Really? Yeah. Oh, I love well, I don't it. know. Well, we're going to have to go and see them in the real life, aren't yeah. we? Because it's hard to judge. I think that would be my other constructive criticism. Mm. Personally, I think not these should enough. be quite big squares yeah. with the name on it, even if you have to return them, because you don't want to waste these. Yeah. Because um, that's not really enough to go by. Mm. Um, I guess it's hard for me because I know from my mum and dad what a big racing green one looks like. Mm. I don't know what that looks like. And we it's need quite to see that. that yeah, color. we need to see that in real life. But yes, I mean, it's super exciting. Um, Dexy's really excited, <laughs> as you can tell. Well, he loves it. I just find Argus the most cosy place to snuggle up against. Every night I come, and my brother and I actually fight for the number one position in front of the Argus. Yeah. So, that's our, our Argus plans. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Super exciting. We always feature the Argus without talking about it. Mm. And I think hopefully now, I think we, we, we both want to make a conscious effort to talk about why this is better than an oven. Yeah. Um, and it, honestly, this is a dream come true, even having one, because it was always a childhood dream of mine mm. to have one. And my mum always talked about how it was her childhood dream. And they lived. My mum and dad lived in a obviously a much smaller house before they bought theirs, and theirs is a, was a small cottage, and they did a bit of an extension. So there we go, the granola is complete and look how much we managed to create. It is honestly so much more delicious than store-bought, really not that much effort at all. And of course you can control what you put in so you can make it absolutely perfect, your preferences, tweak your recipe. I'll eat this one first because the one in the jar is more airtight so that'll stay fresh for longer. This will last, well it could last up to two weeks but I can guarantee you this will be gone in a matter of days because it is so scrumptious with yoghurt, popped over a dessert, you could even put some on top of your crumble. Yum. Okay, my darlings, we are in a little bit of a battle with the last of today's daylight. It's been such a glorious day and I thought I would share with you a few new bits that, um, yes, I've been purchasing from H&M and, and other stories and Massimo Duty, so a kind of high street autumn basics, if you could call them that. Just lovely pieces uh, that I want to try styling with you. So I have popped on as the base of this outfit the Amazon Josie leggings. They are just the perfect thing for lounging around in and also a great base when your outfit consists of a cosy knit. The knit, what I think I'm going to do is number these outfits, so this will be look one, and then you can shop all the individual pieces from the outfits down below. Now, I wanted to see if there were some really lovely, more affordable handbags on the high street, and this one is really lovely. It's a great size, it's a similar size to that Gucci bag, the first one that I tried, and the gold clasp I think gives it a really elevated look to it. Doesn't have any major branding on the outside, but then you can see the store name there. A great organise -y kind of bag, you've got a zippy section in the middle, so it'd be a really nice work bag. Uh, big enough for me for my camera, my phone, a little bit of makeup, etc, etc. The knit, I think, is my favourite element of the outfit. It makes me want to snuggle up by a log fire. I love the brown overall tone of it and this kind of cream detail in the middle. Just feels, feels a little bit festive, feels very autumnal. And then I have styled the leggings. And I think this look would also look really nice with black leggings because I have popped on this new pair of boots from Holland Cooper, which I absolutely adore. They're quite smart boots, and yet, <laughs> you can probably see a bit of the pumpkin field on them down there. Um, smart, and yet very practical at the same time. Ooh, let's sort the leggings out. I love this emblem on the front here. And then they've got this elasticated section on the sides, so they fit really snugly onto the leg. Okay, my darlings, for this next outfit, the new piece is this skirt. You've seen the knit and the boots and the bag many, many times before. 
I'm leaning towards knitted skirts a lot more than ever this year. I think it's just the comfort, the elasticated waistband. And on a day when it's starting to get a little bit chilly, it's a nice way of wearing something that you can really layer up with without having the uncomfortableness of jeans. So for pub lunches, afternoons where you're gonna be relaxing with friends, then this is perfect. So the skirt, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see from that height. Let me bring you down a notch. The skirt has actually got a really beautiful shape to it so you can see it kind of flares out a little bit down at the bottom I would call it almost like a mermaid silhouette which is really really pretty really feminine now I think on a warmer day in fact like today I'd be more tempted to wear something like this with a sleeveless knit but I don't think these warm temperatures are going to be around for that much longer so I've popped it on with something long sleeve just to show you how easy it is to style these boots are my old ones from Reese. I need to find a 2023 version that I can share with you. And yeah, I just think that this bag really elevates so many outfits. I've got on the Amazon dupe for the leather strap Cartier. I absolutely love it. And I really like how the brown tones all go together in a look like this. I've had a lot of oat milk today, so I feel a little bit bloated, so I would be tempted when actually wearing this out the house to pop on my skims, and that would create a really perfect silhouette, and also the skims give you something to tuck your knitwear into, so that's another little outfit hack. <laughs> well, this is a bit funny because I'm sure this was actually labelled as a jumper dress on the H&M website. Um, obviously, I could not show you this without um, my skims on because that would quite frankly be rude. I think if I was like maybe a Gen Z, is that when you're like 23-ish? I think so. Then maybe I could be so cool that I could wear this with my little skims kind of cycling shorts on underneath. If you live in LA or somewhere where it is warm but you want to just get excited and involved by fall autumn items then this could be quite a cool look. Maybe with, I mean, imagine wearing with like Ugg boots. That would be, I've just put that on the wrong foot, that's very silly. This would be a very alternative, but I can imagine like people going to high school wearing this kind of outfit but obviously I'm not going to wear it so I don't know why I'm showing it to you like this I would probably just wear this with like black leggings or something along those lines and just wear it as a really comfy cozy piece easy to throw on and I love a long knit I really really do and um I don't know it's just something about silhouette that I really like I like the fact that it's lower at the back than at the front so imagine this comfy leggings either my Amazon leggings brown leggings or um, black leggings and boots and that is your dog walking uniform <laughs> sorted for the rest of winter. Now I'm afraid I'm actually here to give a negative review. This is not from any of the retailers <laughs> that I said I was going to show you. Um, this is actually from a, a fairly recent Net-A-Porter order, I just hadn't tried it on yet. It's a satin or silk skirt from Faithful the brand um, and I thought it'd be a really nice little autumnal addition to my wardrobe as a brown silk skirt but there is something wrong with the hang. We have steamed this skirt and I'm wearing skims underneath so my lines are all silky smooth however it's kind of just not falling properly here. I actually wonder if the material is too too lightweight so it's kind of gathering and just not not falling properly which is a shame because I can see how a brown silky skirt would be a really nice thing for elevating an evening look at this time of year I love this v-neck this is from Lily Silk and I think I probably do have a discount code live with them probably Josie 12 or something like that um, which I'll leave linked down below but it's a gorgeous cashmere v-neck love the top definitely sending the skirt back and the reason why I showed you is because I'd love to know if you guys have seen anything more affordable and better on the high street for um, skirts like this because I feel like I'd love I'd love something like this in my wardrobe for this time of year but this one is not the one apologies about the diminishing light um, Okay, this is a real Instagram made me buy it, or actually Instagrammer made me buy it. I first saw this uh, denim skirt look on Alex Cole, whose Instagram, if you love fashion pages, she is just 
exploding. She's just hit a million followers and she's the most lovely girl. I've met her at a few events at Cornbury. Um, she's very much, uh, well, she's a, I want to say professional show jumper, but knowing very little about the world of horses, I might have got that completely wrong. It's probably a completely different field. Anyway, Alex was wearing a beautiful denim skirt when I saw her last at the Cornbury Horse Trials, and she very much has inspired this look. So this, I think, might be from Monkey via H&M, not sure, but it will be linked down below. I need to find an alternative to these Topshop shoes because they're so old that I'm sure we'll be able to find something similar and link it down below. Now, like I said a few videos ago, when you do try something new, it's quite a nice way to ease yourself in by pairing it with something very easy and that you're familiar with. So I've paired the denim skirt, which by the way, is a lot more flattering than I thought it would be. I think it makes my legs actually look longer. I thought it might have the opposite effect. So I've paired it with the chunky-ish uh, wool and cashmere blend knit. This is also a lily silk piece. I can't remember if it's from this year or last year, but I'm sure I'll be able to find it and link it. It's got nice, fairly like balloony style sleeves, which I would naturally pull up. And then I think I would maybe do the Jacquemus bag just to keep it very denim and neutral. What do you guys think? I rather love this and maybe this could be a cute opportunity to wear the little hair bow as well. What do we think? I can't see but you guys can. I think it kind of adds to the preppy vibe and by the way a lot more flattering on the booty than I thought this skirt would be. I, th I placed a, a River Island order, <laughs> maybe this is the universe telling me to stop shopping, and um, weirdly it got cancelled and everything got refunded, but I think I ordered a couple of more skirts from there, so I'll leave a few varieties linked down below, but this one I think is absolutely gorgeous, I like the length, I like the tightness on the booty, it kind of looks like a pair of jeans, maybe doesn't need the belt, but cute. I think that the perfect finishing touch could be a pair of sunglasses. And this is great because I've got a few work events this week and going to meet some friends. So yeah, I really like this look. I'm so happy. I feel like the Instagram 30 in 30 days outfit challenge has just really broadened my horizons with what I can wear. And it's been so long that I really played around with different things in my wardrobe. So for that, for opening my new fashion horizons, I'm very, very grateful. The other thing to show you, which again, I don't know that is necessary, is the Lily Silk belt. But yeah, love the skirt. Well, my darlings, this feels quite smart, but very much in line with the outfits that I have been trying on lately. So we've got a few <laughs> successes and a few fails to chat about within this outfit. Um, the success is this particular pair of trousers, and I really, really love how this whole look has come together. I've paired the trousers. It's annoying me that you can see the outline of the pocket, but I'm not sure there's really anything I can do about that. Yeah, not sure. <laughs> Maybe buy a bigger size, <laughs> not so compressed against my legs. But yes, I think the trousers work really nicely as a smart workwear piece. I know that so many of you are always on the lookout for really beautiful elevated outfits that are suitable for an office job or a job where you need to look smart, basically. And I think this would be a fabulous workwear outfit. I've paired with Reese boots, not the exact same ones I had on a second ago. I've also got them in a slightly warmer tan caramelly colour which matches really nicely in with this belt here, the one that I kept from Hermes and yeah same colour as the boots so that's perfect. The blouse is the one that I kept from my Ralph Lauren order that I showed you last week or the week before. Bag wise maybe the same Laurent I think and I have kept the bow in my hair, can you see? I can't see, but hopefully hopefully you can. Yeah, this bag I think is a really nice smart finishing touch. This is a really, really lovely elevated workwear outfit. I have got a day of meetings this week, so I think this is going to be a great look for that. I wonder how it would look with my Goelia blazer. The trousers, by the way, the reason I chose these, very much inspired by a lovely lady named Lauren, whose videos I have been loving on YouTube lately, definitely kindred spirits when it comes to countryside souls, and she, in fact, I think I saw these trousers because of her, and I was very much looking forward 
looking forward? I was looking for... <laughs> That's my phone telling me to put today's YouTube video live. Yes, I was looking for a more affordable alternative to the Ralph Lauren trousers because my goodness, I think they were like £900. I mean, the way that they hang is stunning. I love them, but they were a tad too big. They really bunched up at the back and I just wasn't comfortable spending that much money on something that I was still a newbie at. So yeah, picked up the trousers. Let's see, I don't know if the blazer would work. Do you know what, it kind of does. It feels really smart for me, but I think I'm still just getting used to wearing blazers with the handbag. That is a rather lovely look, isn't it? It's very elegant, very smart. Do we think the trousers are the right size or do I need to size up? That is the question. So the reason why we've got some good and some bad is because, oh, and by the way, Blazer is Goelia, and I forgot to verbalise it, you'll have seen it on the screen, but Sunday's video that I showed you loads of beautiful pieces from Goelia, Josie25 is the discount code and that will get you 25% off the website. So the blazer I'd highly recommend, especially if you are quite petite and small in the shoulders because it's a really nice, like, narrow fit blazer. Oh, I'm starting to look tired in the eyes. <laughs> I think I need to go and sit down and make another pumpkin flavoured treat shortly. Um, but yeah, really, really love this. So let me show you the not so successful bits from um, the same order as the trousers. Basically, I just got the size wrong. I just <laughs> thought I would be a 32. So luckily with the creams, I ordered 32 and 34. 100% size up with these because even the 34, I mean, yes, I work out and I squat, so I've not got the smallest thighs or bum in the world, but I'm just not used to such like tightness around here. Maybe again, because I'm just not used to wearing <laughs> trousers. But I am wearing the skims, which does add an extra layer. So I'm gonna order the trousers. I love the color, love the fit of them. Um, but yeah, these are a 32, 75 pounds. So I definitely need to get the right size. A 32 is just a no-no. I think I'll order, I might even order these in a 36. So I got them in the green, and I also chose them in <laughs> the cream in a size 32. They really, really are lovely. Um, but yeah, definitely the 34 needed for me, if not 36. And very much inspired by Lauren, and I will leave her YouTube channel link down below because if you like when I show you countryside pursuits and things like that, and a little bit of fashion thrown in for good measure, then I think you'll love Lauren's channel too, if you're looking for someone new. Yes, got the trousers in a brown as well it is the perfect shade of brown and yeah i have now just remembered i think there were not many sizes left but i'm going to put my name down on the waiting list for the brown and the green in 34 and maybe 36 as well just to be super comfortable especially as you go into winter more pumpkin mac and cheese is going to be consumed <laughs> ha he Okay, I think the lighting has just really gone for today, um, even though it looks okay here, but I'm also <laughs> pooped and hungry, so I'm going to go down to the kitchen and I'll probably show you some more of the bits from my orders tomorrow, because there are still some really lovely bits. Instead of putting on the trousers that I was wearing earlier, I've popped on these. More lily silk. Lily silk is just fabulous at this time of year. Um, but I've had these, I think I've had these for two years, the wide leg ones, and I love them. They bring them out every year. Where are my slippers? That's what I need to know. Um, okay, so now I just need to very quickly edit together my outfit of the day for Instagram because I've got 40 minutes until that needs to go live. I can hear Charlie twittering about in the kitchen. We were going to have a lovely autumnal pie for dinner tonight. However, neither of us can be bothered to, to cook. So we're going to have a nonna tonda pasta dish, which will be scrumptious. And then when we've eaten that, actually I'm not even gonna promise it because I've been wanting to do this pumpkin thing for so long and I've never actually found the time to do it. So maybe there'll be a pumpkin sweet treat after dinner. Maybe not. I'm not making any promises. <laughs> just going down behind the trees over there it really shows 
change in the sun's movements because in summer we get it all the way down there whereas it's disappearing before we even get to the church at this time of year. So we've got a nonatonda, a spinach ravioli and Charlie has done some extra pine nuts and it looks absolutely delicious. My darlings, it is Monday morning and I feel like I am back into my usual routine now. For some reason I think I didn't do my usual Monday for a couple of weeks. I don't know why. Oh. It's because my tyres <laughs> need inflating that my car shouts at me every time I get in. So I've done my double whammy of reformer and then bar both of which were really really tough this morning so I might not be able to walk later but um, now I'm heading over to Soho Farmhouse Determination to study We want your main God, why does it do that? Um, yes, from one lovely spot to another but first I need to go and grab some dog food from the um, garden centre here because Dexter has decided that he only wants to eat organic game and pheasant I have a ridiculous sausage dog so I'm gonna quickly nip into the garden center and then um, I'm actually meeting a couple of the girls that I met doing a wild swim we're all going to have coffee together at the farmhouse which will be really lovely always always love meeting like-minded people obviously that live locally um, I had this chat with someone the other day that since moving to the Cotswolds Charlie and I have actually made more friends than we did in 10 years living in London which is wild I think maybe I don't know I think it's quite hard to really develop decent friendships in cities obviously that is such a sweeping term and I know so many people make best 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 friends living in cities but anyway I'm rambling and I need to get cracking so I'm just sat here with my lip liner don't actually have a lipstick with me so lip liner will do the trick and yes I'm gonna be exceptionally lazy and actually drive round to the garden center so that I can grab the dog food and then slip away it's half an hour between Dalesford and Soho farmhouse so perfect timing to do my shop here and meet the girls got some fires lit somewhere because it is smelling absolutely delicious around here. Smoky and very autumnal.
Well, my darlings, it's official. I have just made the most perfect drink of all time. This is my Chaga Chai, which is now up on the blog, by the way, our full recipe, with the addition of a scoop of cinnamon ice cream, just to make it extra fabulous. Still wedding ringless because it's still poorly on my finger, which feels so pathetic, but I'm just letting it aerate. Let me know if you've ever had this issue before, but I have accessorized with my lovely Favourite of all time, actually, I would say, necklace from Astrid and Mew, this gorgeous one with the pearl. I always get a lot of questions about it. It does come in and out of stock, so definitely worth just keeping an eye on the website. And this ring just looks so gorgeous, worn delicately by itself. Very clever that it's adjustable. I guess it kind of has to be in the advent calendar. Anyway, as you might be able to tell from the outfit, it is roasting today. It's like the summer that we never had. So I'm going to do a little bit of work outside and also do a bit of dahlia picking. Conscious that this might actually be my last time doing this because the weather forecast from now on looks rubbish. But you know what I'm like, when it's gloriously sunny and warm outside, I just can't be inside, especially knowing that today might be the last warm day opportunity to get any kind of vitamin d on my body before winter so i'm gonna tootle around the garden and see what little errands it need doing before we basically pack down the garden for autumn winter is starbucks made drinks this good in fact it's so much more special that it's homemade and it is just delicious mm. The ice cream's now melted, so it's not looking quite as fabulous as it did when I first scooped it. Yeah, it's basically my Chaga Chai, which is the Jeeves and Jericho spice mix, a spoonful of dirty Chaga, and then oat milk with a little scoop of the cinnamon ice cream. Perfection. Oh, and I'll leave these cute little mugs linked down below as well because they are rather adorable. managed to pull together a few lovely bud vases with dahlias in. My Café Olé, the beautiful light pink ones, they have probably been my absolute best, most abundant dahlia this year and they really are striking. Do you remember at the beginning of summer they were literally the size of dinner plates and the beautiful daisy ones over here, they're coming to an end now but they were really spectacular this year too. I'm always a big fan of the little pom-poms like these ones and then the more unusual ones are still coming through they took a little bit longer this year but definitely worth the wait I don't think I've ever had so many rosebuds waiting to bloom in October before and I'm not sure if it's because this year I've been a little bit more militant when it comes to deadheading almost every evening coming down with my scissors and any that need snipping I just give them a little cut normally of course I do take away the dead heads and pop them in a basket but that's just goes to show that with regular deadheading you can create such fabulous continually blooming plants my goodness most honeybees have gone into, oh, bumblebees have gone into hibernation already. But you are looking extra plump. The hydrangea are looking gorgeous down here. And the anemone have got rather ginormous. Such a beautiful spot. doing a task which is quite possibly my least favorite gardening task of the entire year and it is clearing out 
with finished plants. So I've given the tomatoes a real cut back and tomato roots, I believe, are actually nitrogen producing. Um, so the roots can be quite good for the soil. I think this is correct. I know that broad beans roots are. So I'll actually compost the tomato soil. However, lots of the little pots that I'm pulling up are completely root bound. This soil isn't really good for anything now. So seeing as it's our green bin collection day, I'm just doing a little bit of this. I filled up the green bucket with the graveyard of some of the tomato plants, which are all over like this one here and slowly but surely going around sorting out all of the pots. A big tidy up is definitely needed in here. A big water after today, I don't think anyone was expecting it to be quite so sunny and warm today, but still some little bits determined to come through for the year. We've got a few chili peppers, my red chilies, these did so well this year, that was definitely a great investment, and even my little habanero chilies over here be making some more delicious soups before winter arrives. face my fears and sort out the little plants that needed clearing away in here and I was doing it very tentatively because I've always been very afraid that it's literally the perfect device contraption for spiders to live in and I don't know if you can actually see the goosebumps on my arm right now they are quite incredible managed to get all of the pots out and all of them clear without seeing any spider and now I'm not going to show you him because he is quite petrifying um, but yeah I have just seen the biggest spider living between the back two top left holes and now I can't go near it again I know it's totally ridiculous they are just little garden creatures oh gosh I don't actually want to get any closer the worst thing that's worse than seeing a spider is knowing there's one there and then not seeing the spider he could literally jump out at me at any second so don't really know what to do now. <laughs> Need to put these back. Maybe I'll just throw them in and hope that he doesn't pounce at me because I really wanted to get this little area clear so at least I can tick this part off my greenhouse tidy to-do list. Right, I'm gonna do it. Wish me luck. of the dressing room and I'm just popping my rings in my little ultrasonic cleaner in the hope that I might actually be able to start wearing them again tomorrow. I just pop a little bit of fairy liquid in there and then set it off. I can't show you on camera because the vibrations of this actually send the camera a little bit crazy but hopefully this will do the trick. <laughs> nowhere in the house has decent lighting at the moment it has suddenly become autumn again it's it was so scorching today but the second the sun goes down you suddenly remember that we are in the middle of October but what a glorious day it has been really lovely to have a nice lunch with a new group of girls at Soho farmhouse that was really really nice I feel very grateful to Kate who invited me along um, to join in with their girly lunch yeah, a lovely afternoon in the garden. I feel like I was very productive in the greenhouse. There's something that I wanted to talk to you about. I can't remember what it was. Maybe to tell you how much I've been loving the David Beckham documentary. I think that's probably what it was. Oh, and also, <laughs> this is how boring my mind is. My new obsession thing to listen to on Spotify is the Succession soundtrack. I don't think I really appreciated when I was watching it, and I'm still watching it, how amazing the music is. There's a particular song, in fact there's two particular songs, 
I wonder if I can play you a snippet and not get demonetized. I'm gonna skip forward. <laughs> I'm not sure if any of you share my same love of classical music, but I was blasting that out of my car speakers driving through the lanes and this time of year I feel like I really appreciate living in the countryside more than ever because you really notice the seasons changing the leaves starting to turn golden and yeah everything that I mentioned at the very beginning of the video beautiful so I highly recommend that soundtrack so anyway I think I'm going to end the vlog here. I'm going to take my makeup off now. Charlie is cooking up a kale and romanesco and shiitake mushroom noodle dish. Sounds nice. Don't like mushrooms, but I'm sure I can pick them out. And I'm excited to eat my granola with some yogurt for my pudding. So darlings, I'm going to bid you good night. Thank you so much for watching the vlog. Hopefully you managed to get your hands on one of the advent calendars. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching to the end. If you did watch to the end, then leave the word cardigan <laughs> because a cozy cardigan is now very much required. Well, orange, yellow. Um, yeah, leave the word cardigan in your comments. Bonus points if you get it in a sentence, not just the word. And that is all from me for today. Thank you for watching. Good night. Mm -hmm.